Everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another contrast plus painting tutorial from the old world. Yes, we are back with the big one. Yes, this is the Necrolith Bone Dragon. Here it is. We have a high priest on Necrolith Bone Dragon. This is from the Toon Kings of Kemri Army set that Games Workshop very kindly have sent me early to build up and paint for all of you. And we're doing this one, it's the centerpiece. It is an absolute chonker of a model, it's huge. Uh, unfortunately, the large XL handle does not fit on this because the base is square. If it was round, it would, but the base is square, so there isn't that curvature in order to get it into the actual mount, which is a little bit annoying, but there we go. We can't do anything about that, so I'm just gonna have to hold it. Uh, but it is a very big, very chunky kit, and we're gonna be painting it up today. So we're gonna just jump in and we're gonna start now because, well, there's enough waffling on from me. And it has been primed in white scar, just like the rest of the Tomb Kings of Camry. And the color we're gonna be using first is a roughly two parts Lamia medium to one part skeleton horde. But what I've done is I've actually taken four parts of skeleton horde and eight of Lamia medium. So it's a two to one, but you know, it's, it's, I've taken lots and lots in order to just kind of be able to do as much of this as possible. And we're gonna be applying this over the top of all of the bones of our bone dragon. And we're gonna start like we normally do in cavalry models, is we're gonna just apply this over the top of all of the, the dragon itself. And we're gonna get the dragon done. And then once the dragon's done, we're gonna move on to the rest of it. Now the thing that's gonna be slightly irritating about painting him is you are just gonna to have to take it really slowly and steadily. You take it one section at a time. So for example, I'm gonna come up to here like that. And then I'm just gonna flip it over to make sure I haven't missed any areas. Like so, because he's hollow first and foremost, and there is so much bone here. It's not like, for example, a terror geist that's a little bit more contained sort of easier to track. This one is just going to be a bit of a hassle. So you're just gonna to wanna to examine the model from every angle. So there we go. Bring it down here. As I say, we're looking to get this over the top of all of the bones. Like that. And now, as you can see, in and around here, we've got the underside of the mouth and the teeth. If we're not careful, we'll forget to do. Like I said, just take your time. Thank you. 
And then once all that's done, we shall return. And whilst we're applying all of that skeleton horde and Lamia medium, it's a good time to tell you about our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Serious Readers. I've talked about them in the past, so you guys already know I really believe in their stuff. So when Serious Readers asked me to check out their high definition Gemini table light, you know I absolutely had to. It uses all the same great stuff as their floor light, especially their proprietary daylight wavelength technology to replicate the daylight spectrum as closely as technically possible, which makes a big difference on your eyes. The biggest feature here though is that it's not one, but two light engines on separate flexible arms, giving you optimal coverage of your painting space, a light source to share with someone else, or a perfect setup for taking photos of your miniatures. They're built right here in the UK as Serious Readers is a British company pioneering research into improving sight through shedding better light, relying on replicating the natural daylight spectrum that our eyes have evolved to use. They offer a five-year warranty and are recommended by over 500 independent opticians. They're also super cool folks with excellent customer service, so much so that when I asked for a colder bulb, they sent me one or in this case two, along with two diffusers to make my life even better. Check out Serious Readers today, and if you pick one up and use offer code SR490, you can get £100 off high definition lights and free delivery. Find out more in the links below. Turns out with just a little bit more bravery, you can actually get this painting handle on here. The XL one, which is awesome. So, <laughs> we're going to continue on. Now, next colour we're going to be using is Black Templar. And we're applying this over the top of all of the claws. Just like that. It's not just going to be the claws. We're looking for, I guess these would be talons actually. Anyway, we're looking for these bits on the end of the wings. We're looking for these ones on the knuckles. Like that sort of thing. We're looking for the ones on the legs and things like that. We're going to apply this over the top of these spiky bits on the head. Like so, and then similarly on the tail, we're going to apply this over the top of pretty much the entirety of the tail. Yeah, that sort of thing. But then, as we bring it down to around about here, we're actually just going to start applying this over the top of the spikes. Going along all the way up across the entirety of the body. But of course, if you have the box art in front of you, that'll help. 
So with that Black Templar applied all the way around, as you can see, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to use this to shade some of these bones, but not all of them. So first thing we're going to do is along the tail and the back, we are going to shade all of the bones. So we're just going to get this on nice and liberally. being super careful here with the application just want to get it on there like that we're then along this kind of tail column can also apply this like so I want to make sure that the recesses here. We've got the Agrax in them. So of course we're going to do the same thing on the other side, but for the moment we're going to now move on. So similarly we are going to do the same thing going up these areas. Like that. And then on areas such as the wings, what we want to do is we want to shade the joint like this, getting it all over. We're going to bring it down the spines just a little bit. Like that. Then we're going to wash the brush, touch off the water, and we're just going to blend it out just a little bit. Like that, so we get a gradual move through. And then similarly, around these knuckles, for example, again, just bring it down just a little bit. Wash the brush. And then blend it out. Just like that. We're going to do that across all the spines. And we're also going to do that over the feet and things. So we'll flip it round to this one. Just here. We're going to apply this all over the top of these bones by the black. Like that. A bit in there as well. Do a little bit inside the jewellery. Like that. And that should be all good for the front feet. For the back feet. Hang on, a skeleton horseman making an appearance because of how long the tail is. There we go. On the back feet, for example, this one here, I'm going to apply this coming up to the knee joint. Like that. All the way around. A bit of brush acrobatics here. I want to bring it over the top of the back knee kneecap.
like that, and then wash the brush, touch off the water, and we're just going to once again just smooth out that transition just a little bit. You can do that across both back legs. And then finally, we've also got this part's the neck, technically part of the spinal column. Apply this all over. Like so. And then we're going to apply this over the top of the teeth. Like that. And we're also going to apply this over the inside of the dragon's mouth. So with all of that done, we're now going to finish off all of the bone. And we're going to do this by taking some pallid witch flesh. And we're going to very gently dry brush this over the top of all the bone details, including the back. So with that all done, the bones of the necrolith are now all finished. So what we're going to do, we're going to move on. And we're going to move on to the red. Now, we're going to be using some Blood Angels red here. And we want to be applying this over the top of any of the kind of ties, such as this one. Like that sort of thing. But what we're also going to do is we're going to use the Blood Angels Red to start painting in the different segments on some of the armor. So, what we want to do is we want to use this on the bottom rungs. of all these triangles. On both sides. And then, on the headpiece here, we want to start on this one. And then we want to alternate them.
like that sort of thing. Similarly, we have the jewelry. We have some segments here. So again, we're gonna start on this one. Like that. And then once again, just alternate. Like that. And then similarly, around here, I'm going to once again alternate. So with all of that Blood Angels Red applied, as you can see, what we're now going to do is move on to the next colour, just for the moment, and that is going to be some Achillean Green. And this is going to be the one that alternates with our red. With all that Achillean green applied, we're then going to take some Croxagor scales. I'm going to apply this over the two skulls. there and here just whilst we're waiting for that to dry we're going to take some wild wood and we're going to apply this over the top of the wood So with that wild wood all applied again, we haven't done most of the saddle, so just don't worry, we're gonna to get to it in a minute. <laughs> but what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take some thinned down retributor armor, and we're gonna apply this over pretty much all of the remaining details, excluding this snake, snaky bit, just here on this leg. Otherwise, you want to get this all over. So all that retributor armor applied, as you can see. What we're now going to do is going to take some thinned down Castellax bronze. We're going to apply this over the top of that snake. So that done, we've now got all of our base coats on on the dragon, so it's time to add some shades. And the first of these is going to be some Reichland Flesh Shade. We're going to use this over the top of all the gold.
And so with all that Reichland flesh shade applied, we're then going to take some Nuln oil. I'm going to use this to shade the Castellax bronze. So with that done, the dragon is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. It's a little bit beyond that. But what we are going to do now is rather than kind of do any highlights on the golden things yet, because we're going to have a lot more of that to do later, we're actually going to move on now. And we're going to move on to the palanquin or throne or whatever it's called. And we're going to start off pretty simply here by taking some wild wood. And we're going to be applying this over the top of all of the wood. So with that wild wood applied to all of the wood, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Blood Angels Red. I'm going to apply this over the remaining ties. Just like we did on the dragon itself. Like that sort of thing. And we're also going to apply this over the top of the saddle cloth. As well as the canopy. And with that Blood Angels Red applied, we then take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to apply it to the bones that make up the chair. In there like that. So with that all done, there is a lot of stonework to now work on and we're going to be using a couple of different methods in which to do this and before we do that, we're going to do one over top of everything. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some croxagore scales and we're going to apply this over the top of pretty much all of the stone, starting down here. Just like this. I'm going to work our way around the model. So 
wanting to get things like the floor. So with all that Croxagore scales applied all the way around, as you can see, what we're then going to do is whilst we're waiting for it to fully dry, is we're going to take some Pterodon turquoise and we're going to apply this to the top of these tablet-y bits. And with that turret on turquoise applied, we're then going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Lamium Medium and Ultramarines Blue. And we're going to apply this over the top of all of our structural rock. So we've got this bit at the front of the saddle. As an example. Like that. We will do the floor on the inside down there, but what we're also going to do is over the top of this ring. We're going to apply this. Like so. We're going to apply this over the top of these kind of hanging pieces. Like that. And we're going to apply this to this bit down here. On both sides, of course. And finally, We've got the big bit over the top. So with that all done, we're now going to work on all that alternating stonework once again. And the colour we're going to be using first is Blood Angels Red. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start in here. I'm going to start with this section just there. like that and then we skip over and do the next one 
like that. And then, we probably can't see this very well on the camera, but we're gonna do the one in the middle. Like that, and so on and so forth. Like so. Similarly, up here, we're going to start in this corner. And then we're going to alternate. We would finish that off, but we've got lots more to do. <laughs> so we're then going to move to the front just here. We're going to start in this one. And then alternate them. Like that. Whereas on the rung above, we're going to start between. There. And there. I'm going to follow it all the way around. But then down here. We're going to begin with the red. Skip over it. And so with all that Blood Angels red applied, but then take some Achillean green. I'm going to use this on all that remaining stone. And so with that done, we're now going to uh, take some thins down Retributor armor. We're going to apply this over, well, pretty much all of the remaining details around these areas. There's a whole lot of gold. So with all of that Retributor armor applied, there is going to be a lot more, of course, because we have the priest itself. But before we do that, we're gonna continue getting the base coats on on the rest of the kind of throne. <laughs> uh, the next one is going to be some Seraphim Sepia, and we're gonna apply this over the top of these paper trails. And so with that Seraphim Sepia applied, then I'm going to take some Nasdreg Yellow. I'm going to apply this over the top of all of the kind of magic-y stuff on the bird. So with that all done, we're then going to take some wild wood. I'm going to apply this over some of the feathers of the vulture. What I've realised is what it is. So we're going to be starting just here on these large feathers. I'm 
like so. And similarly on the underside. Like that. And then we're also going to do this over the top of the kind of first rank of feathers. And the body. Like that. With all that wildwood applied, we're then going to take some apothecary white and going to apply this to the bird's neck and remaining feathers. What we're also going to do is going to apply this over the top of the bones on the book. And with that apothecary white applied, we then take some Gillum and Flesh and we apply this over the vulture's head. But not his beak. Just whilst we're waiting for that Gillum and Flesh to dry, we're going to take some Briar Queen Chill and we're going to apply this over the top of the smoke up here and over the top of the magical hand just here Now that the Gillum and Flash is dry, we can take some Skeleton Horde and we can apply this over the top of the beak on our Vulture, like that. But what we're also going to do is we're going to apply this over the top of the bone and the skull on the staff. That skeleton horde applied, we're now going to take some black templar. I'm going to apply this over the top of the rocks. In our sensors. And so with that now done, we're going to take some Tesseract Glow. I'm going to apply this towards the top of our magic -y bit coming out of the hand. And then next up, we want to use a little bit of thinned down lead belcher to paint in this. <laughs> So 
So with that note belter applied, we've now got all of our base coats on on part two of the Bone Dragon. So what we're going to do is we're now going to shade it. I'm going to take some Reichland Flesh Shade. I'm going to use this to shade all of the gold. But what we're also going to do here is we're going to apply this over the top of any of the red stonework as well. With all of that Reichland Flesh Shade applied, we're then going to take some Coelia Green Shade. I'm going to use this to shade our structural stone for the blue. This is the stuff that we added that Ultramarines blue over the top of. So this large ring here is an example. This bit here as well. So with that done, the throne is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. And I think it's looking pretty fantastic. However, just like with the bone dragon, we're not going to finish it just yet. We are going to now tackle the priest themselves. So we are going to start off with some pox walker. We're going to apply this all over the top of our rider's skin. With that pox walker all applied, we're then going to take some black legion. I'm going to apply this over the top of all of his clothes. So we've got his little skirts. And then we've also got the cloak. Now we are going to do both the inside and the outside of the cloak. But what we're not going to do is all the ribbons. With that Black Legion applied, what we're then going to do is take some Agrax Earth Shade. And we're going to apply this over the top of the bandages. on the legs and arms. So, with that Agrax Earth Shade all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Sigvald Burgundy. And we're going to use this to paint in some of these ribbons but not all of them. So we're going to alternate just like we do on the stonework between the red and the blue. Only this time we're going for a slightly darker red and blue. So we're going to start with this one just here on the far left. Like so. Then we're going to skip the one 
just here. And then we're going to move on to the next one. Like that. Then on the back, we're going to start with this one just here. So with that Sigval Burgundy applied, we're then going to take some Leviathan Blue. I'm going to apply this over the top of the remaining ribbons. So with that Leviathan Blue applied, we are now back to Achillean Green. And we're going to be using this to paint in our alternating panels. So we're going to start here on the head. Going to take it one little panel at a time. We're going to do the same thing on the staff. Starting one in. Like that. We're going to work on the arms as well. Starting there. And there. Like that. We also want to apply this over the top of the scarabs. So with all that Achillean green applied, we are then going to once again take some Blood Angels Red. I'm going to apply this over top of those remaining little panels. That Blood Angel's red all applied. We're then going to take some wild wood and we're going to apply this over the string holding up the bone and the skull. Like that sort of thing. What we're also going to do. I'm just going to apply this over the top of the handles of the weapon. Well, staff. And with that wildwood all applied, we're then going to take some pterodon turquoise. And we're going to apply this over the top of the panels on the staff here and here and we're also going to apply this over the little scarab on his chest.
So with that all done, we're now going to take, for the last time, some fins down retributor armor. And we're going to apply this over top of pretty much all of the remaining details. The only one we're not going to be applying this over top of is the blade. Just here. Otherwise, I'm going to get this all over all of the remaining details. And with all that gold applied, we're then going to take some thinned down lead belcher. And we're going to apply this over the dagger. And so, all of our base coats are now on. So, we're going to add some shades once again. And of course, we're going to be using some Reichland Flesh Shade over the top of all the gold. And so with that done, we're then going to take some null oil. I'm going to use this to shade the silver and the black. We didn't do this bit before, so we're doing it now. Put a little bit in there. And then we have the black of his clothes. So with that done, at long last, our Necrolith Bone Dragon is fully at what I would call a War Hipster battle ready, and I think it looks fantastic already. However, we are, of course, not going to leave it there. We're going to take it to the next level, and we're going to do this by adding one layer, but also many highlights. Now, that first layer is going to be some thinned down Evil Sun Scarlet, and we're going to be using this to effectively relayer the canopy up here. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to just avoid any of the deepest recesses where the Blood Angel's Red has given us some really good shading. But otherwise, we're just going to apply this Evil Sun Scarlet over the top of the whole thing. So with all that Evil Sun Scarlet applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Wild Rider Red. And we're going to use this to highlight the canopy, as well as all the other red details. On the model. So with all that Wild Rider Red applied, we're then going to take some thinned down Temple Guard Blue. I'm going to use this to highlight the darker blue sections of our structural stone. So with all that Temple Guard blue applied, we're then going to take some Baharoth blue. 
I'm going to use this to add a little bit of a spot highlight to those structural bits of rock. So we're just going to pick out the corners, for example, here, 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 and there, like that sort of thing. We're going to use this to also highlight the runes in our pterodon turquoisey tablets. Like that sort of thing. And we're also going to use this to highlight the croxagore scales. And the Achillean green stone. So with two out of three of the large highlight areas now done, so this is all the blue and all the red, we might as well work on the third of the biggest areas, which is of course all of the gold. Now, the color we're gonna be using to highlight all of that is some thinned down Liberator gold. And we're gonna be doing both a highlight and a layer here. So for example, here on the wings, it's not just because I got a blob of wild red or red on that one. But what we're going to do here is going to fully relayer these with the Liberator Gold, just avoiding the recesses. We want those to be nice and bright. Whereas on areas such as the head piece, we're gonna pick out the edges like that. When it comes to the large jewelry, we're going to relayer. Avoiding the hieroglyphs in the recesses. Like that sort of thing. Whereas for all the trim, we're just going to highlight it. And this way we can create like two different types of gold on here using the same paints. So with all of that Retributor Armour relayer and highlight applied, we're now gonna move on because believe it or not, we're actually very nearly there. So what we're going to do is we're gonna next up, take some Tesseract Glow once again and we're going to apply this over the top of his eyes. Just like that. With that Tesseract Glow applied, we're then going to take some thinned down Deepkin Flesh. I'm going to use this to highlight his flesh. And so with that done, because there's not a whole lot of flesh that's actually finished, so what we can do is we can take some thins down Wazdaka Red, and we're going to use this to highlight our Sigval Burgundy areas. Yeah, 
And with that WASDAC red applied, we're then going to take some Alatoc blue and we're going to use this to highlight our blue areas. And I realize we've already done a lot of blue. So to clarify, this is just on those bits that we did with the Leviathan blue for his ribbons. And with that Alatoc blue all applied, we're then going to take some thinned down Dawnstone. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the black details. So with that's all done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down white scar. I'm gonna use this to do a number of different things. So firstly, what we're going to do is we're gonna use this to add a tiny, tiny, tiny little dot in the middle of each of his eyes. Like that. We're gonna use this to highlight the white feathers on our bird. And we're going to use this to highlight the bones of the book. and the magical swirly swirlies. So with that all done, our Necrith Bone Dragon is pretty much finished. There is just one last thing to do on him, but before we do that, we're actually gonna work on the stone well, the base here. And well, you could do this any color you wish, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by taking some thinned down Dawnstone. And I'm gonna be applying this over the top of all of the rock. With all that Dawnstone applied, there's actually another thing I've forgotten about, which we're going to quickly do, which is to take some thinned down Rune Lord Brass. I'm going to use this to highlight and relay our Castellax bronzy jewellery. So we're going to relay it in there, but over the top of the snake, I just want to pick up the scales. With that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to put this over the top of all the skulls on the base. And with all that Skeleton Horde applied, we're then going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of all little Scarab Beetles. So with that all done, we're now going to shade all of that rock using two colours, Null Oil and Pox Walker. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to take the Null Oil on our brush and we're just going to start slathering it on like this. Like so. And then very occasionally 
what we're going to do. Is once you've done a section, like for example, all of that bit, we're then going to wash the brush, grab a touch of pox walker. We're just going to add it in there. So that done, we're now going to finish off the bone dragon itself by taking some small amounts of Saigor Brown. I'm going to use this to draw in some hieroglyphs and things like that on the parchment. If you're struggling for inspiration, there's already quite a bit of it around the actual model itself. So with that done, we're now gonna finish off the base by taking some Administratum Grey. I'm gonna gently dry brush this over the top of all of the rock and over the top of our scarabs. And with that done, we're then gonna take some Ulthwin Grey. We're gonna dry brush this over the top of the rocks. So with that done, it's now time to work on the rest of the negative space. So we're once again going to be using our Geek Gaming Scenic stuff, just like we did with the Tomb Prince. We're going to put a lot of this on here. Like that. And then we'll come back for some more. I'm not entirely certain where my... Trowel is gone. Aha, found it. So just need to deal with this situation. There we go. Start spreading that PVA glue out. Over the base. Like that. Once we've got it all covered. Gonna take our basing mix because it's in too small a tray. We're actually just gonna start essentially pouring it on. So make sure you have some paper down.
Like that. Good thorough shake. And there we have it. Now that the base is complete, including the rim with some Black Legion, our Necrolith Bone Dragon is now finished. And this was a real challenge to paint. He's quite fiddly and building him was quite fiddly as well. Sub assemblies is going to be really difficult for those of you who prefer to do things that way but also building him fully assembled is quite tricky as well. Really rewarding though I think he looks absolutely fantastic and a true centerpiece for the Tomb Kings. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you'd like to support me further you absolutely can do so by heading to patreon.com forward slash warhipster just like all of these wonderful amazing people have done and alternatively, you could become a YouTube channel member by clicking on the join button below, exactly like these fabulous folks have done scrolling up on the screen before you. There are so many of you out there that it really takes my breath away and I cannot thank you enough for everything you do, as without you, I wouldn't be able to keep making these Contrast Plus videos. And if you really like this video and you want to send me a little thanks, just click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.